Shalom, 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 Israel, where the Amos with the Watchmen for Israel. First and foremost, as we always do, we're going to give all praise and honor and glory unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, to the brothers pushing the truth and strong sincerity, laboring on the highways and byways, making their body a living sacrifice, doing all they can for the hopeful elect and for the nation of Israel. I'm going to give y'all a strong Shalom. Um, continue to labor, continue to endure. Continue to put forth all things that are beautiful in the sight of the Lord to magnify his name and to seal the hope for a life. Right? To the women holding it down in the household, reverence and their husbands, being a teacher of good things, to the younger women and to the children, being an example to the sisters who are coming into the truth and to the sisters who've been in the truth. I want to give you all a strong shalom. Um, and to the men and women forsaken as well. Coming back to serve our God, Yahweh Bashim Yahshua, and compel y'all to be as the church of Berea, right? To search the scriptures daily and diligently to see if all the things that are written are true, right? The heart of the wise uh, uh, study if for an answer, loosely paraphrasing. So you want to be mindful of the things that you hear, double and triple check to make sure that those things are true in the scriptures. Because a lot of people speak in their own belly, speak false words say things that are contrary to the doctrine of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, and we eat it up like it's, you know, Sunday dinner at Big Mama's house. But the righteous are going to look at the ingredients to make sure that everything's clean, make sure that you can eat of this food, and that's the same thing we got to do with these scriptures. So I want to compel those who are just coming into the truth to do the same thing, right? And hark and seek unto men who speak thus saith the Lord, Right? Because those are the true prophets of the Lord, being an oracle of the Lord, oracle being a mouthpiece of the speak. Those men who speak the words of the Lord are the men who you want to be uh, uh, following or studying from, right? Loosely paraphrasing, uh, uh, lay at the doorstep of a man of understanding, like it says in Cyrus. So you want to be at those men's doorsteps. You want to be trying to hear everything they say. Right, so uh, this lesson I'm gonna call it uh, the heart and what it is. Right, the heart and what it is, because a lot of Christians you hear the, your heart, your heart. I follow my heart. Right, God knows my heart. This, this, and that. Not understanding that they're speaking about that that vessel or that muscle in your body that pumps blood throughout all your veins, that they go to different uh, organs and so on and so forth. Yeah, the Lord knows that muscle because he creates it, right? But when you read in the scriptures, the heart, the heart is speaking directly of your mind or of your spirit, right? These things, you know, uh, uh, they're not just what they are. They're double unto those things, right? And the ones of understanding are going to know exactly what it means. Right, let's, let's start with Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Right? So my heart that pumps blood through my body is wicked? No, that's talking about your mind. Right? Let's go to the blue letter to get that understanding. Right? So this is Strong's 3820. Nabal. Right? And the, the outline of the biblical uses, the inner man, mind, will, heart, understanding, the inner part, right, your soul, right, your mind, knowledge, underthinking, reflection, memory. So when you read these, another one, your conscience, right, your conscience, my heart doesn't have a conscience that pumps blood through my body. All that comes from my brain. That the most high put on me. That's what you, your spirit. Your spirit is your mind. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruits of his doings. So the Lord is searching throughout the midst of Israel, everybody's mind, what they meditate on, what they pray for, what they think about on a day-to-day -day basis. And he gives you according to the fruit of your doing. So if you think about uh, uh, gambling all day, your mind is going to be fixated to gambling. You're going to give over your soul to gambling. You're going to lose everything that you worked for. Right? Or your mind is always giving over to getting drunk. 
the Lord gonna have you buy a bottle and the bottle and the bottle until you become an alcoholic. Until you you them paying with for, for beers with pennies. So the Lord gives over don't you know, gives every man according to his ways, according to the fruits of his doing, which is in his mind. Right? So as a man thinketh, so he is. So if your mind is constantly on being vile and wicked and disgusting and being outright evil, the Lord is going to give you those things that you've given your mind over to. So it's, con it's, it's, it's imperative and important that your mind be meditating on the things that please the Lord. Now our mind is, is deceitful and wicked, and it gives us uh, uh, vain thoughts, fiendish thoughts, and what, what do they call it in the world? Intrusive thoughts now, right? Intrusive thoughts are, are things you ought not do, but you do it anyway. Like, what happens if I trip an old lady? What would have happened? What happens if I, uh, if I push this button on the elevator? Is the elevator going to stop? That's how a child thinks. But men and women that understand they have to move in the way that the Lord has directed us to move. Right? Let's go to Proverbs. We're going to go to verse 5. It says, And say, have I hated instruction? So like, I'm going to start at uh, verse number 11. And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. And say, how have I hated instruction? And my heart despised reproof. Right? So when judgment comes, when you're put into the ground and you got to be resurrected to catch that judgment or you catching the judgment here on earth, you're going to be meditating on how have I hated the instruction of the Lord? How could in my mind think about the things that the Lord commanded us to do and do it? And do it. Because truly, if your heart and your mind is set to serve the Lord, nothing's going to deter you from that. Nothing's going to deter the men who were set up from the beginning of this world, from the foundation of this world, to be part of his chosen, to, to turn to the left or turn to the right. They're going to follow the land wheresoever he goeth, because their mind is of one accord to move with the land. Right? Let me get this verse up. Right? This is Romans chapter 12 and verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but con but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Right? So we have to be all of the same spirit. Right? Our spirits should be wanting and waxing to serve the Lord. So you can't be walking around with drug dealers and, and, and strippers and and, and, and gang bangers talking about we're all of one of mine and you trying to serve the Lord. Right? You can't you can't mix that in because once you do that, you're going contrary to what the scriptures have to what the scriptures have told you. Because if the Lord wanted me to be with gang bangers and drug dealers, I would be with gang bangers and drug dealers. I'd be walking around with a red with a red shirt, a, a A's hat. Or I'd be walking around with a blue rag. What's Snoop Dogg say? With a blue rag hanging from my backside on the left side, because that's the crip side. Right? That's what we would be doing. But no, the Lord put it in our spirits to understand that we're Israel. To understand that we gotta keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability. To walk after the ordinances. To do things that are beautiful in the sight of the Lord, that he may be praised in the sight of men. None of this is our, our doing. The Lord put it in our spirit to do that, in our heart to do that, which is your mind. Right? And the, and the longer we meditate on wickedness, the further we get taken away from our, uh, uh, you know, our Lord and Savior and serving our Lord. Because you don't know it's in the king's heart to kill you. Isn't that Yahweh Shai the king? If the Lord put it in his mind to slay you like he's going to do the rebels in the wilderness, how much more in this lifetime that we're living today should our mind be fixated on serving the Lord? 
Well, let's go to Proverbs chapter 17 and verse number 20. Right? He that has a forward heart findeth no good, and he that and he that had the perverse tongue falleth in the mischief. Right, a forward heart is a heart that likes to be combated. Right, you know those people that combat everything? Be like, yo, uh, back in the day, I used to score 15 points a game. I was killing it. Man, you ain't scoring no 15 points. Those people who are always contentious, right? Let's get the strong definition of it. Right, this is Strong's uh, H Hebrew 4672. Masa, right? And the biblical uses it, uses is usage. Well, I don't think I clicked the right one. It's fine. Right? Ikashi, Hebrew 61 and 41. Twisted, distorted, crooked, perverse, perverted. Right? Somebody who's crooked and they distort things and they twist it all around. So if your heart is twisting everything and you're trying to twist the scriptures, right, to fit your liking and to fit your, you know, day-to-day -day life, but like you're not going to find any good. Because the Lord doesn't deal with people trying to tend to their own wants and needs. The Lord is cut, it's clear cut. There's no cut cards with the Lord. It is what it is. Either you like it or you don't. Get with it, get lost so on and so forth. So this is the understanding of, of what the heart is. The heart is the mind. And once you understand that the mind is supposed to be meditating on the Lord day in and day out, the ordinances of the Lord, wait, let's go to uh, uh, 1 Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter, chapter 1. And I'm going to jump down to verse number... Uh, Starting number 13. It says, uh, 1 Peter 1 and 13. Well, for gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up the loins of your mind. What does that mean? Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Be unshakable. Be like that rock, which is Yahweh Shah. How Yahweh's mind was to do that ministry and to offer his body as a living sacrifice and nothing deterred him from that. That's how you gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober, right? Yeah, that's talking about be sober from, you know, drugs and excessive drinking. Now it's okay to drink wine. It's okay to enjoy yourself, right? Wine make it the heart glad. But when you take it 15, 16 shots talking about I need another bottle, that's when it's like, okay, you're taking it too far. But being sober and not having your mind or your, your heart filtered and flustered with the things of this world, filtered and flustered with the filth and, and wickedness of this world. And yes, it happens. Yes, Satan is going to play on your mind. You're going to think about things you are not to. But that's when you have to gird up the loins of your mind. That's when you have to set your mind in order. That's when you have to pray for the Most High to give you that mind to continue in the things that we have learned. Right? And hope to the end of grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahweh Shahim Mashiach. As obedient children, obedient children's mind is to do as their parents tell them to do. That child who's like, oh, I got to be home before the street lights come on. They're going to foresee that the street lights are coming on in, when the sun starts to go down. When the sky turns a little orange, you know what? I, I got I to gotta bounce shots and be cool. I'm going to catch y'all next time. What happened to those kids who didn't do the things that their parents told them to do? They got snatched up, right? They died a horrible death. Right, they went to go get candy from a strange van. It was never seen again. Right, it's a what's that movie called? It's a movie 
that came out not too long ago with, uh, I think the dude's name was Johnny Depp. He had the mask on. It's called Black Phone, right? So these little kids went missing, and the guy was snatching them up because they were being disobedient to their parents, not doing what their parents told them to do, right? Going out at night. And nothing good happens at night. Nothing good happens in the midst of the night. That's when you got the freaks come out, the wicked of our people, the wicked of the nations. And they looking for mischief to do. They got the forward heart. They got the heart that desires to do wickedness. So why would you want to be in the midst of them? Why would you think that the Lord will have the angels protecting you if you're tempting the Lord? How are you going to tempt the Lord and think, yeah, I'm going to go out and I'm going to be a light to them. I'm going to be at these clubs. I'm going to be around those smoking weed. I'm going to be around those doing this, this, and that. And think you're not guilty by association. In the court of law, if something were to happen, you're guilty by being around. If me and you were to go steal from somebody's residence and you get killed, I'm going to be charged with your murder because I'm an accessory to the crime. And it's the same thing when you out here with the nation, when you out here with the end of the screen, when you out here with the people who don't serve the Lord. Right. Let's go to Job. Chapter 15. Job chapter 15. Verse number 12. Why do thy heart carry thee away? And why do thy eyes wink there? That thou turnest thy spirit against God and let his such words go out of thy mouth. Right? Why do you let your heart carry you away and get you jammed up in certain situations, man? Why do you let your mind let you wander off and get all type of effed up? Right? I'm not trying to use crazy words. But you get jammed up because you let your mind tempt you. Now you at this woman's house knocking at the door because her husband not there. Right? Now you got a blunt under your bed because you let them people around you talk to you and get into your spirit. And now you just want to get high. Your mind carries you away to do foolishness. Your mind carries you away to follow in the lust of your flesh. And the lust of your the flesh wants you to die. Where well, your spirit is struggling to be strong. Like your spirit is lifting weights all day long to fight the things that the flesh are bringing forth. And the only way your spirit will get stronger is to pray into the most high. Be around people who are trying to do the same thing. Reading about how our forefathers rejected the lust of the flesh. How Joseph ran out of the house of the ruler of Egypt because his woman was trying to sleep with him. You got to read these accounts and you got to know these accounts and let these accounts strengthen your heart that you don't carry away and turn of your spirit against your house by Shemir Al-Shah. And let me say this again. Nobody is exempt from having their spirit turned. Nobody is exempt from that. Nobody is exempt from a spirit hopping on you and now you've acted foolish and saying foolish things. Nobody is exempt from these things happening. But it's not about how many times you fall. It's about what do you do when you fall. When your heart turns away from the Lord, you're supposed to seek and turn back to it ten times harder. Seventy-seven times seven times harder, man. So you should, or seventy times seven times harder. So you should be always meditating on the words of the Lord and always examining yourself. What you thinking about? What you giving your strength over to? Is it women? Is it money? Is it drugs? Well, uh, J. Cole got a song. Uh, no, nah, that's Kanye West. That's Kanye West. It's called Addiction. <laughs> Where he goes like, why everything that's supposed to be bad make me feel so bad? I, used to, I, I, I like that song. That's a great song. But it says, what's your addiction? Is it money? Is it girls? Is it weed? I've been afflicted by one, not two, but all three. 
So the same thing that we went through, y'all going through. But what are we going to do? We're going to just let our flesh whoop our ass. We're just going to let our flesh beat us up every day and not give, not give our, 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 our heart the, uh, the chance, the opportunity to fight the flesh. That's why your eyes wink at it, man. Your eyes wink at looking at another brother wife. If your heart is truly not built up in the Lord. Like the brothers always say, he don't know what to do with that. You know what, man, I'll tell you what I can do. Now you committed adultery in your heart. Now you just waiting to die. Now you just waiting to get stoned. Spiritually, right? You getting stoned spiritually, man, you getting shot. Right? Something crazy happened. But you walking down the street and the, the earth open up and you fall 200 feet to your death. You didn't catch a cramp while you swimming in the pool and you can't move. Now you stuck at the bottom of the pool. Then final destination. So you have to be mindful and not wink at the ignorance. Right? Two more precepts and then I'm going uh, to close out. Right? This is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4. In verse number 12. For the bewitching of naughtiness doeth obscure things that are honest, and the wander of concupiscence do undermine the simple mind. Right? So the, be, the, the beginning and thinking of naughtiness, it makes you lose your integrity. It makes you step away from the man or woman you're supposed to be in the truth. Honorable, integrable, right, upright. So the, the 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 bewitching the the conjuring of your thoughts and the and the foolishness that you let up to your spirit, it just causes things to 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 be cast down into the dust in the wandering of concupiscence. Concupiscence is sexual lust, right? Thinking about uh, orgies and all this weird stuff. It undermines the simple mind. It causes the mind that is not built up in the Lord to be enticed and fascinated. And now you on these websites looking for a woman to go find and sleep with. Now you driving down these back alleys looking for prostitutes to buy. And that's what happens. You get bewitched. And now you get judged and don't know how to deal with it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a... I don't want to be too uh, candid on, on matters that happen with brothers, but it's a brother who used to be in the camp, right? And the brother was following doctrines, talking about you can buy prostitutes and you can deal with the people of the other nation. The brother got jammed up and locked up. Now he a damn sex offender. Now he a freak. Now everywhere he go, he got that title of I got caught for trying to buy some ass. Because you let that concupiscence ruin that simple mind. It undermined your, your, you know how a baby has the mind to figure things out? That's what a simple mind is. A simple mind, oh, well, you know, I can do this because somebody said it's okay. Somebody said I can do that. Oh, it's a business transaction. Yeah, we can, we can do. No, that's simple, man. That's a simple mind. And you've got yourself jammed up. You sleeping with a prostitute and the damn condom break on you. Now you got every STD known to man. Sexually transmitted demons all throughout your body. You peeing fire. Right, you got HIV and AIDS at the same time. You always sick because you let that simple mind be obscured and undermined by concupiscence, man. You shouldn't be you shouldn't be looking to just lay down with any woman, man. With these light headed women. And that's what happens when you give your mind over to these things. The Lord can judge you at that very moment. And that's the fear of the Lord. Your mind should always be fixated on the fear of the Lord to keep you away from that. So your heart isn't being so deceitful when you follow in your heart. Right, I'm going to get one more precept, and then I'm going to close it out. Right, this is Sirach, chapter 6 and 37. 
Let thy mind, let your heart, let your spirit be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thy heart and give thee wisdom, wisdom at thy own desire. So the Lord is going to build you up when you set your affection on things that are above. When you set your affection on things that please him. When you set your affection on things that cause the Lord to sup with you and knock at your door. And open up and bring you gifts and understanding. And the things that cause men to look at you as honorable. So that's what the heart is. Your mind. And that's what happens when you give your mind over the lust. You give your mind over the heaviness. You destroy yourself. But if you give your mind over to the Lord, you become a vessel uh, uh, of honor instead of a vessel fit for destruction. So guard your heart. Gird up the wounds of your heart and your mind and fight a good fight. That's a shallow woman.